We will continue from the football. <laughs> but now I will ask questions. So get ready to answer the questions. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reciting the whole Qur'an in Ramadan and it is coming to the air of the Prophet We know that it is Allah who is reciting because of the verse of the Qur'an. Tell me which surah? Faida when we have recited this Quran, Quran, you must follow that way of recitation. Which surah? I just said it. I just said it. Mm -hmm. Or oh, maybe you didn't have your makana. <laughs> surah Turkiyama. Yeah. You don't remember. I just said it. When I have recited this Quran, you must follow that way of recitation. Okay? And then we said, well, if he's reciting the whole Quran in Ramadan, then Nabi Muhammad <laughs> is listening. <coughs> And he is hearing verses of the Quran for the first time. It has not come down as yet as Waki. Because it will take how many years to come down? 23 years. 23 years, I think. Um, for us, we probably should serve Makan first. They're not answering me. <laughs> <laughs> so he's hearing verses of the Quran for the first time. He never heard it before. It has not come as yet as what he. That is why he's trying to memorize quickly, quickly, quickly. And Allah says, no, don't do that. La to hundred lisanakalita jalabi. Do not hasten your tongue to recite this Quran. Inna alaina jamahu. We are the ones who will bring all the parts together, make a whole. What Quran and we will recite the whole Quran to you. And then when uh, uh, Imam Hasbullah recited uh, in the Salat, he recited from Surah to Taha. And in Surah to Taha he recited an ayah. Where Allah says the same thing. Wala ta'ajal. With Quran. Do not hasten with the Quran. Min kabl, min wahi. Wait until the wahi has come down, the whole Quran, in 23 years, and then you will memorize the whole Quran. So you cannot <coughs> memorize the Quran, O Muhammad, wasalam, until the whole Quran has come down as <coughs> Wahi. But he's <coughs> listening to the whole Quran in Ramadan. He's listening to the whole Quran in Ramadan. So how do we solve this problem? <laughs> huh? Allah says in Surah to uh, which Surah is this? Um, Chanukriyoka? 
The answer is that that part of the Quran which Allah is reciting in Ramadan, which has not as yet come down as Waqi. After Allah has recited it to him, then Allah removes it from his memory. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't remember it. So the next year when Ramadan comes and Allah is reciting the Quran to it, it will be as though he's saying it for the first time. Because Allah has removed it from his memory. Sanukriuka Falatansa. I'm going to teach you to recite this Quran. And when I teach you, you will not forget. Illa masha Allah. Except that which I want you to forget. Good. So now then, he's hearing the whole Quran in Ramadan. So Allah will have the first juice for the first night and the second Jews for the second night. But Allah has already divided the Quran. Mm -hmm. All right? Quran and Farak now. We <coughs> have already divided this Quran, meaning in surahs. The takra for the purpose of recitation. So the first surah is, of course, Al-Fatiha. In Bahasa Kunji? Kunji. Every time you recite the Quran, this is a Kunji. Surah to Al-Fatiha. Kunji. You cannot recite the Quran without Kunji. So then, this is the kunji. So on the first night, Surah al and the whole of Surah al -Bakara. We ask the question, Allah is dividing the Quran into Surahs. So why did he put the longest Surah of all at the beginning? Why? Answer? <coughs> Answer? Uh, Why did he put the longest surah of all in the beginning? Why? Come on, Rio. Rio, Rio. Kenapa di awalnya Quran itu ayat-ayat itu panjang? Di awalnya surah Al Baqarah itu panjang. Ayat-ayat pendek kan sudah panjang atau belakangan? Maybe because this is early month, so you still have uh, energy to do that. You, yes? Because it's can easy starting. <coughs> surah is big, because. Why did he put the longest surah at the beginning? Why? Because it's easy to read it. What is that? Easy to start it. Huh? Easy to start. No. When uh, you start to form the, the big you one. the longest surah at the beginning to test you. Ah. To test you. Yes. So, so from the. When you beginning. recite the whole surah on the first day, or when you recite part? <laughs> the whole surah. There's a second reason why. All the long surahs are at the beginning. And at the end of the, surah, the Quran, short, tell me why. Uh, yes. Maybe I can uh, continue from him. Um, when we start from the big one, uh, so we get the tip in the after. Yeah. We did? 
When we start from the B? He's sleeping, fresh is sleeping. I wish yes. I wish the ambassador was yes. Yeah. I would love to have the ambassador sitting here. The answer is Allah wants us to recite the Quran with the moon. So that we learn to live with the moon. Tell me in Bahasa how you say live with the moon. Hidup dengan bulan. Huh? Hidup dengan bulan. Hidup. Live. Hidup. 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 So when the moon is young, Allah wants us to be strong. So He gives us the long surahs at the beginning of the month. And when the moon is old and we are tired, <laughs> He gives us the short The easy one. The easy short surahs. So that when we recite the Quran with the moon, we will eventually live with the moon. Okay? And the people who live with the moon, they will never experience something that our Prophet said would happen. Let me tell you what our Prophet said. He said, that in the end time, <clears throat> time will move faster and yet faster. Mm -hmm. A whole year will pass like, like, flash, like a month. A whole year will pass and it would appear like to be only a month. Mm -hmm. And the whole month will pass like a week. And the whole week will pass like a day. And the whole day will pass like an hour. And the whole hour will pass like the amount of time it takes to kindle a fire. You never heard this prophecy? Real? Real? Answer me. Not yet. Not yet. First time. First hand, the time goes by. Time is very limited. I'm, I'm surprised. Tell me, put your hands up if you ever heard this hadith before. Put your hands up. Only two. All right, well, the, the, the people of Indonesia have some hope of today. Yeah. Whenever you experience time moving faster, this is proof you are not living with the moon anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and Allah gave us the moon. And He gave us night and day and He tells us in the Quran, He says, I've given you the moon. The stages of growth and decline of the moon. And I've given you night and day. لِتَعْلَمُوا عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ I've given you the moon and night and day for you to count the years and measure time. And all of us have abandoned the moon now. All. <laughs> because what happened was, I'll tell you a secret. I don't know if you know it. What the Jal did was to take the solar year 
which is divided into seasons. In Indonesia, you don't have winter. Two seasons. You have only two seasons. Yes. But here in, 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 in Moscow, you have four spring, summer, autumn, winter. And in the Quran, Rehlata Shita Iwasayf. Remember? Rehila fi Quraysh. Rehila fi him. Rehlata Shita Iwasayf. Summer and winter, the caravan. Hmm? So the solar year is divided into seasons. And uh, the lunar year is divided into months. And Allah says in the Quran, the months are 12 in number. So you start from one, and when you start again from one, meaning a year is comprised of 12 months. So Dajjal could not shake this, so he stayed with the 12 months. But he said, I'm going to take the solar year and I'm going to divide it into 12. Yes, you have to have PhD in mathematics to do that. <laughs> yeah? So now the solar year is longer than the lunar year. Because when they went to sleep in the cave, Suratul Kaf. You say Suratul Kafi. <laughs> when they went to sleep in the cave, that wall had abandoned Islam, abandoned the truth. So that wall said they slept for 300 years. Was da'adu tis'a. But those who have faith in Allah, they added nine. Was da'adu tis'a. Huh? Surah, you know this? You don't recite Surah to Kafi? Yes. Well, shake your head. <laughs> they, they, they slept in the cave for 300 years, was there and they added nine. So 300 solar years is 309 lunar years. A solar year has about 11 days more, about 11 than the lunar year. So to divide now the solar year, who was dividing it? It was the West, the Western Christian world. So then we said, they said, some months we have to give 31 days. And some months we give 30 days. So which months you will give 31. It was their Christian calendar mm. that determined for them mm -hmm. Well, Easter had to have so many days. You see? So they put six, 31 days in this month because of their Christian feast. And we follow it. We accept it. Mm -hmm. Like sheep. See? And cattle, <laughs> and goats, and camels, who have no capacity to think. Yeah. I think if Ahmad Sukarno was here, <laughs> I think he would love this lecture. <laughs> because Ahmad Sukarno could think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. And so, when they divided the solar year, and they gave some months 31 days and some months 30 days, they still could not solve the problem. So then what they did was, <laughs> you would believe this, they said that when the month of February come, that every fourth year, 
February will have 29 days. Otherwise, February has 28 days. Today is what day? Today is what day? Today is what 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 Today is And when you abandon a last calendar and you accept this bogus calendar, then you pay the price. That you will perceive time moving faster. I lecture extensively in different parts of the world. I was in a mosque in Britain. I said, all those who experience time moving fast, 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 put your hands up. Everybody in the masjid put their hands up, everybody. Imam was sitting next to me, but Imam didn't have his hand up. So I was about to turn to Imam to congratulate him. But he is not the But I don't have put his hand up. <laughs> so today, everybody in the whole world experiencing time moving faster. But why? You have abandoned the moon. You no longer live with the moon. But people living in Kampung, they still live with the moon. Going to Kampung, you see, people in Kampung, they never say, I'm moving faster. No. And so, the long surahs in the Quran are meant to tell you, you must make yourself strong in the beginning of the month. And when the month is old and you are tired, he gives you the short <coughs> Now then we turn. We go back to the good yeah. So on the first day of Ramadan, Surah to Dvatya and Surah to Bakara. Second day, Surah to Dvatya, Surah Ali Imran. Third day, Surah to Dvatya, Surah to Nisa. Fourth day, Surah to Dvatya, Surah to Maida. Fifth day, Surah al Fatiha, Surah al Adam. Sixth day, sixth day, Surah al Fatiha, Surah al Araf. Now, wait, hold it. Allah says in the Quran, seven times he repeated in the Quran, that he created the heavens and the earth in how many days? Six days. الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام six days ثم استوى على العرش but in the Torah it says something else that he created the heavens and the earth in six days and on the seventh day he rested <laughs> <laughs> this is in the Torah. <laughs> On the seventh day, he rested. <laughs> so, in the Sharia, which came down to Musa, they were asked to commemorate the seventh day. Because Allah created the heavens and earth in six days. And you are commemorating the seventh day. But they had quarreling and disputes over how to commemorate the seventh day. And then Allah tells us in the day, so you are not allowed to walk. 
on the seventh day. You can rest and you can pray on the seventh day. Answer? There is no answer except, except in the recitation of the Quran. No answer you can get. Allah has divided the Quran to teach a lesson. Because when the seventh day comes and you're reciting the Quran, something strange happens on the seventh day. Two things on the seventh day. Remember on the sixth day, Surah Al-Fatiha and Surah al Araf. That is the sixth day. So which surah comes after Surah Al Araf? Come on, somebody. Al Fatihah. Al is correct. So give him a kind. Al Fatihah is correct. But something strange about Al Fatihah. What is it strange about Al Fatihah? It is short. It is short. All of these were long. But this one is short. Why? Huh? Allah sent the Quran to people who think. Ahmad Sokano should not be the only one who thinks. <laughs> Why? A surah al anfal shot. Not only that, something else. Every surah of the Quran begins with Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Except? Except? Which one? Except surah to Tawbah. Except Surah to Tawbah. If they are masters, they would scare. You'd be very surprised if they are masters. Except Surah to Tawbah. So why is it that Al Anfal is shot? And the surah after Al Anfal is the only surah without Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. The question is <coughs> why is Al Anfal short? When all the previous surahs were long, six days of creation, six long surahs. And now on the seventh day, Alan Fahad is short, for the rest. and Toba does not have Bismillah Rahman Why? <laughs> Allow me to try, sir. Go ahead. And, uh, uh, this is just my comment. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I will be just as the conclusion from the rest six of the of the six uh, first verses yes. before. So the seven one, the unfold as the conclusion. The seven one and four is short because this is the as the conclusion of the four. Well, the, the six. And what about Toba? Oh. Why is Toba without Bismillah? Uh, you give me a correct answer, you get Makkah and Padam. Terribly sorry. Oh, bro. Okay. Because Surat al Tawbah uh, tells about war. The answer is Allah has given us Alan Fal Shot 
And even as Toba, we told this Mila. Continue from Anfang. Because he wants us to join. Continue from Anfang and Toba. We combine Al Anfal and Toba as your Jews mm. for the seventh day. And when you combine Al Anfal and Toba as your Jews for the seventh day, this is how we commemorate the Sabbath. The six days of creation. Okay? All right. I have a book entitled <coughs> The Quran and the Moon. And I believe it is translated to Bahasa. Okay, but this is not though everybody understands English. So you can get it from my website. Uh, Trust knows my website and read that book before Ramadan. <laughs> read that book before Ramadan. Trust mm -hmm. will give you the website. You can download it. I believe we have it in Bahasa as well, but we have it in English. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I came to Moscow to attend the conference, the multi Polarity conference from Monday and Tuesday. There must have been about a thousand people present. Yes. A huge auditorium uh, somewhere in Moscow, Fresno, the place. And a uh, hundred and thirty countries, including Indonesia. Yes, 130 countries present in that conference. And uh, the whole world of Islam, everybody present <laughs> in that conference. And uh, <coughs> they invited me to speak in the opening session of the conference uh, on multipolarity. And I went to the Quran. I only got about ten, 10 minutes, but I used the 10 minutes. And I went to Surah Al Hujurat of the Quran. Uh, in Surah Al Hujurat, Allah says that I created you from a male and a female. And I caused you to emerge as different nations and different tribes. <laughs> different nations, different tribes, multiplicity, diversity. <laughs> but the Jal wants us to all become one people, <laughs> one global society. <laughs> Everybody eating Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody eating the same food. <coughs> huh? Everybody dressing the same way. Same Everybody way. with their edges. <coughs> Leave my phone. Yeah. This um, this phone here. This is bringing all of mankind together yes. as yes. one global society. Yes. <laughs> yes. One global society. And uh, one people will rule over the whole world. That is called unipolarity. But Russia is saying no. We're not prepared to accept that. And China is saying, no, we're not prepared to accept unipolarity. We want multipolarity. So I, I, I went to the Quran to explain the reason why they want to rule the world. It's because they believe that they were created by Allah to rule the world. 
they believe that they are the chosen people of the Lord God. And this is in Surah to Jumah. Ya ayyuhal Ya ayyuhal What is it? Ya ayyuhal Ya ayyuhal Ya 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 O Jews In za'amtum Annakum Awliya'u lillahi min dun indah If you believe that you are the chosen people of the Lord God to the exclusion of the rest of mankind. <coughs> Which is what they say here. The Torah says they are the chosen of the Lord God. They are born superior. For the man now about, then why don't you desire death? But they will not ever, ever do that because they know what sin they have committed. So we've identified this belief that you are born superior. You identify that you are born with a birthright of superiority. This is the root of unipolarity. Mm -hmm. And we have to <coughs> resist it. Our prophet said, Allah's blessing be upon him. He said, All of mankind will stand before Allah on judgment day as equal in his sight as are the teeth of a comb. Mm -hmm. Guess who in the conference got the hit, hit with that? Can you guess? The Hindu? Mm -hmm. The Hindu? <laughs> yes, yeah, there were Indian delegates, Hindus, mm -hmm. because they believe the Brahman, the Brahman, Brahman. So, is born okay. superior. <laughs> He's born with the birthright of superiority, like the Jew. The Brahman and the Jew had the same belief, birthright of superiority. <coughs> And in the second day of the conference, I spoke on Russia in the Quran. <coughs> what does the Quran say about Russia? You're working in the Indonesian mission and you're in Moscow. So long as you remain in Russia, you must be able to tell the Russian people what does the Quran say about Russia. And the first thing you will say to them is that the Quran says nothing, nothing at all about Russia if Russia is a European country. But now they are saying that Russia is Eurasian. Eurasian, Eurasian. Europe and Asia. Yes. So we say there is nothing in the Quran about Russia which is a Eurasian country. Nothing. But the Quran has plenty to say about Russia if Russia is Christian. <laughs> if Russia is primary identity is his faith, Christian faith, mm. then the Quran has much to say about Russia. Let us go to the first verse of the Quran on Russia. Sometimes when Allah speaks, His words are mm. like thunder, mm. very powerful, hard language. Let me give you an example. In the Sharad Dawa, in Allah, the worst creatures with Allah 
إن الشر الدواب إن الله سم البكم الذين لا يعقلون the worst creatures with Allah are the deaf and the dumb who don't think who don't think huh? and they accept hadith that our prophet married a child yeah that she was how old? Nine years. How old? Nine years. That's six. That's six. Six. That's Our that's prophet? Yes. Married a child who is six. Six years. Yeah. Huh? And you accept that? That is in conflict with the Quran. But that is also in conflict with elementary common sense <laughs> because none of you will marry a six-year-old child no. none 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 of you will give your daughter in marriage at the age of six none none of you none of you none but yet you say he married a six-year-old you don't have sense in your head so sometimes when Allah speaks his words are like thunder. And sometimes when he speaks, his words fall like gentle raindrops. Mm -hmm. So when in the same ayah there is thunder and also raindrops, then we must pay attention. Something special, yeah? Mm -hmm. huh? And this verse is in Surah Al-Ma'idah. And Allah says that you will most certainly find at the time when the Quran was revealed as well as in time to come that those who will have the greatest hatred for you would be the Jews and Yahud. Latatidanna ashaddanna si'adawatan lilladhina amanu al-Yahud, the Jews. So we ask, is this anti-Semitism? <laughs> Are you going to really? Put a child and ban the Quran. <laughs> Come on. This is what Allah is saying. Walladina Ashraku. In addition to the Jews, <coughs> there is another great enemy of yours. Great enemy of yours. Mm. A people in Shirk. Who is the Quran addressing? <coughs> Who is the Quran addressing? When he speaks of a people in shirk, believe more on God. Answer? Believe more on God. Answer? The Christian says that there is God the Father <laughs> and also God the Son and also God the Holy Spirit, Trinity. But the Christian says we worship one God. Yes, we worship one God. But that one God has three persons in the one God, the Trinity. But there's a difference between the Christians one part of the Christian world says the Holy Spirit comes only from the Father and not from the Son. Another part of the Christian world says the Holy Spirit comes from both the Father and the Son. 
This is the shirk. This is the shirk that Allah is speaking about. These people who say the Holy Spirit comes from both the Father and the Son. These will be the most hostile of all people to you, in addition to the Jews. And who are they? It is the Christians of the West. This was 1054, when they broke away from Constantinople, mm. Western Christianity. Mm. And Western Christianity said, the Holy Spirit comes from both the Father and the Son. And it is Western Christianity, the Western world, which is waiting war on Muslims. They hate Muslims. Yeah. They hate Muslims. A family in <coughs> Sweden, Swedish man, married an Egyptian girl. He is Muslim, she is Muslim. They're my students. <coughs> they have four lovely children. Mm -hmm. And they live in Sweden and they're trying to bring up the children as Muslims. So they don't want to send the children to school. They're teaching the children at home. The government of Sweden forcing them, forcing them, they want the children. And because the family resisting and resisting, the government seized all four children. The children are probably now eating pork. Yeah. And the Swedish government very happy. When the mother and the father attempt now to try to publicize the case, and they turn to me, they put it on my website, they put it on my YouTube channel and so on. The Swedish government now, because the wife is not Swedish, she has a Canadian passport, but she's from Egypt, and they've expelled her from Sweden. They took the children and they expelled the wife. <laughs> the wife was sent back to Canada. So the husband said to the wife, go to Trinidad, go to Sheikh Imran's home. So she arrived in my home, I was not there, I was in Moscow, and my wife was treated and kept her in the home and protecting her. This is what the Swedish government has done. This is the hatred they have for Islam. For Islam. And, uh, Allah is saying in this verse of Surah al uh, you will most certainly find that those who have the greatest hatred for you will be the Jews and these people who commit shit. That's the thunder. And now come the raindrops. <coughs> and you will most certainly find that those who are closest in love and affection for you would be, it doesn't say would be a Christian people, no. It says would be a people who say we are Christians. In uh, Nasara, meaning they have no fear of mm. proclaiming their identity as Christians. Whereas the Frenchman will say, I am French. The Englishman will say, I'm English. The American will say, I'm in nationalism. But <laughs> these people don't say, I'm French, I'm English, I'm German. They say, I'm Christian. I'm Christian. And these Christians will be closest in love and affection for you. Who are those Christians? ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ كِسِّسِينَ 
وربانا وأنهم لا يستكبرون The reason why they will be closest in love and affection for you is because number one they have the institution of the priesthood in that. The priesthood has a role, significant role to play in society. <clears throat> Number two, they have the institution of monasticism, the monastery. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, Trust took me to the main <coughs> monastery in Moscow. And thirdly, because these Christians, they are not an arrogant people. They don't want to rule the world. Those Christians in the West, they want to rule the world, but not these Christians. So we ask, which Christians are these? Look at it right here. Right here. I attended this conference. Mm -hmm. I'm a scholar of Islam, and they put me on the platform in the opening session to speak. Could this happen in Washington? Could this happen in London or Paris? <laughs> it happened here in Moscow. Okay, and then when the conference is over, a small group, about a dozen, just a little more than one dozen, we were invited <coughs> to have dinner with the foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov. And Lavrov came, the foreign minister came, and sat down <coughs> with us for two hours. Two hours. It was a long table, and the minister is sitting at the center on one side. Opposite him is Alexander Dugin. Okay. And next to Alexander Dugin, I am sitting. Huh? And each one of us is allowed to engage the minister. And I got my turn, and I got a lot of time with the minister. And I'm telling the minister the importance that the Russia is in the Quran. He said he doesn't know. And the minister said to me, could you write a summary of what the Quran says about Russia and what the prophet said and send it to me? Would a, an American Secretary of State ever say that? Would a British Foreign Secretary ever say that? A French Foreign Minister? Not even a Pakistani Foreign Minister would do that. And the Russian Foreign Minister has asked me to write for him about Russia in the Quran. So here is the evidence. And when Allah says there will be a Christian people who will be closest in love and affection for you. He's speaking about the Orthodox Christian world which is led by Russia. I've given you one verse of the Quran. I can give you many, many more. But this is enough for today. Yes, yeah. Any questions? So, yes. <laughs> uh, Any question, Mr. Fadi? Yes, go ahead. <coughs> Is it close but, but, but because I can't hear you. But there is a basic uh, fundamental, fundamental uh, difference between Islam and Christianity, as you said before. Christianity, even in Russia, they still believe in Trinity. So how you explain? Uh, okay. It? Yes. But still, Good point. Still, 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 yeah. There is a big problem between us, and it's the Trinity. Surah the room of the Quran. Okay? And it is revealed <laughs> in the lifetime of the Prophet. So this is 600 years after 
Nabi Isa right? And this is 300 years after the Council of Nicaea established the Trinity. 300 years after the Trinity was established, the Quran was revealed. <clears throat> and in Surah to uh, Rum, this is what Allah says. Alif Lam Mim. Gulibat in Rum. Rome has been defeated. Who is Rome? Answer. Constantinople. Constantinople, okay? At that time, the split had not yet taken place. The West had not broken away from Constantinople, Rome. No. So Constantinople was defeated. Who defeated? The Persian Empire. <coughs> Good but the Rome. But Allah says, even though they were defeated, I am telling you that they will now be victorious. And this victory will come to Rome within a few years. And this victory will no, would it but room fiat Rome has been defeated in a land close by. Okay? So it's not Chicago. <laughs> Rome has been defeated in a land close by. But after this defeat, Rome is going to be victorious. Yes within a few years. Lillahi al-Amr. Room will be victorious because Allah is the one who controls power. Ordain. Who will be victorious? Lillahi al-Amr. Min qabl wa min ba'd. Twice. Will Rome be victorious? Both before and after. Binasrillah, they will victory. Rome will be victorious because Allah will help them. Binasrillah, Yansurum Yasha, and Allah helps whomsoever Allah decides to help. This is the Quran. And on that day when Rome is victorious, you Muslims will celebrate, including Nabi Muhammad. But my question, <coughs> the Rome that Allah helped to be victorious, did that room believe in the Trinity? Come and answer me. That's the room, I think, the <coughs> successor of the Constantinople. My question to you is, the Byzantine Empire, is, which is in Constantinople, which is room of the Quran, did that Byzantine Empire believe in the Trinity, yes or no? <laughs> You're afraid to answer. You're afraid to answer. You're afraid to answer. The answer is, and you cannot escape. There's no way to escape. The Byzantine Empire had accepted the Trinity 300 years earlier. Rome believed in the Trinity. 
And despite the fact that Rome believed in the Trinity, Allah helped them. Mm -hmm. And they were victorious. Okay. And when they were victorious, we celebrated and Nabi Muhammad also celebrated. Mm -hmm. Explain to me how, how could Allah help a people who believe in the Trinity? <laughs> Answer? Answer. Uh, they say that the Holy Spirit comes only from the Father and not from the Son. By, uh, by holding on to this belief, they are de facto actually believing in the Father as God. <laughs> because the Holy Spirit does not come from the Son. It comes from only the Father. But these on the other side, they say the Holy Spirit comes from both the Father and the Son. So Allah will not help them, not this side. That side, yes, not this side. Okay, any other questions? Sure. Yes, Krasna. Conti continuing from your explanation, so the logic it will be like this. It means that we as a Muslim, not a single ummah that guarantee for the heaven. The other's ummah is Islam also before us. Can you when explain that? Nabi, until the return of Nabi Isa, mm -hmm. as I told them, mm -hmm. we have to use wisdom, wisdom, mm -hmm. in reaching out to them to teach them the Quran. Mm -hmm. Okay? There are many Christians today, having listened to me, now say we believe that the Quran is the word of the one God. And as soon as they say that, our people jump up, take the shahada, take the shahada, take the shahada. This is all we, this is all the sense we have in our head. Take the shahada. This is the nonsense we have. You spent 600 years. You could not get them to believe the Quran is the word of God. You could never do it. And I have come and preached to them and now they say we believe the Quran is the word of God. Are you jumping up Turkish? You don't have any sense in your head? No, no, no. You can't go to heaven if you are Christian. You have to join this Ummah in order to go to heaven. This is the nonsense we have. So you have, when the Isha Islam returns, all of them will believe, all, that the Quran is the word of God. And they will give up the Trinity. All of them, but now it is already happening. Yes. They are, just go to my YouTube channel and you see how many Christians are there. And they say, we accept that Muhammad is a prophet. And we accept the Quran is the word of God. And these idiots, take the shahada, take the shahada. I don't know what to do with them. No, these people want to continue to follow Jesus. They don't want to join this woman. And I say to them, by all means, you can continue to follow Jesus. Now that you accept the Quran and you accept Muhammad as a prophet, mashallah, you made great progress. Any more questions? Sorry. Yes, right. Islam means me that submit to God, right? So before us, before our community of Islam, long time ago, from Nabi Ibrahim, they have their own community with their own Sharia and their own pet and their own milah, right? So it means that we belong the continuation of that long tradition of Islam, and we have just like a final bricks of this ummah. What's it? Well, how is this way? explain that? There, there, there is a verse in Surah Al Maida that is very, very important for this subject. You have to study that verse, okay? 
Allah says, لِكُلِّنْ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرَعَةً وَمِنْ هَاجَةً وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا وَلَكِنْ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ فِي مَا آتَاكُمْ فَاسْتَبِكُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَرْجِيُكُمْ جَمِيعًا فَيُنَبِّيُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ فِيهِ تَخْتَلِفُونَ There is one deen with Allah, only one deen, not two. And that deen is Islam. But that deen did not come to the world for the first time with Nabi Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam. That is the same deen which has come with every prophet of Allah. <coughs> every prophet of Allah. But in the one deen, there are several ummahs. <laughs> yes. Every prophet has an ummah. And some of the prophets also brought a new sharia, O oh Lord. Hmm? And the beast, he said, I didn't come with any new law. The, the Sharia which came to Nabi Musa is the same Sharia of Nabi Isa Islam. Yes, he has a new kitab, the Injil, but the Sharia is the same. Good? So now, when Nabi Isa Islam returns, who is he coming back to? <coughs> Did he come into this Ummah? Mm -hmm. What does Allah say in the Quran? To whom is Nabi Islam sent? Answer? These people. Rasulan ila Bani Israel. Ya Bani Israel inni Rasulullahi ilaykum. I am the messenger of Allah <coughs> sent to you. Has Allah changed that? So when he comes back, he's coming to anybody else? <laughs> Is there any evidence that Allah has changed that? Where's the evidence? There's no evidence that Allah has changed that. So when he comes back, He's not coming to this Ummah. Mm -hmm. This Ummah will have Imam al Mahdi. That is our Amir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And he is coming back to Banu Israel. Okay? But because Allah taught him the Quran, Allah did not teach Imam al Mahdi the Quran. Allah taught. They don't like this in Iran. <laughs> the Iranian don't like to hear this at all. Allah says in the Quran, He taught Nabi Isa Islam the Quran. But He didn't teach Imam al Mahdi. So when Nabi Isa Islam returns, He's returning to His Ummah. But He will be a teacher for us. And He will be a a, a guide for us and a law, lawgiver to dis make legal decisions like a mufti, like a kadhkari. But our Amir is not Nabi Isa. Mm -hmm. Our Amir is mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Imam al Mahdi. Mm -hmm. So he will have his Ummah and we will have our Ummah. Any other questions or shall we call it, call it a day now? <coughs> different branches, they're divided. And uh, the Coptic Christians in Egypt are Orthodox. Uh, the Christians in Abyssinia, in Ethiopia, very old Christians, uh, are also Orthodox. The Christians in Syria are Orthodox. The Christians in the Balkans are Orthodox. The Christians in Moscow are Orthodox. When the Second World War was taking place, 
there was an alliance between Stalin and Churchill mm -hmm. and Roosevelt. And Hitler was defeated. Germany had surrendered. The war should have been over. But Churchill and Roosevelt asked Stalin to continue the war. <laughs> because they wanted the Soviet Union, which was a godless state, an atheist state, to take control of the whole Orthodox Christian world. And that is why the Second World War continued mm. even after Germany had defeated. surrendered. Okay. It was war that the West was waging on the Orthodox Christian world. Mm. And uh, he has a book, press, about Britain and Russia. They hate Russia. They hate Russia. They despise Russia. They will they be waging endless wars on Russia. That's the West. And so why was the Ottoman Empire also doing it? The Ottoman Empire waged war on Russia for 600 years. Answer? Because the Ottoman Empire was also working for the job. Yes. Nobody has said that in Indonesia. Yes. Indonesia don't know that. The Ottoman Empire was working on behalf of the Jal <laughs> and fighting against the Orthodox Christian to sabotage friendship and alliance between Muslims and Orthodox Christians in the end time. <laughs> but despite the Ottoman Empire, look at what has happened. Lavrov has said to me, Write for me and send it to me. What does the Quran say about Russia? Tell the Ottoman Empire, put, take that, put it in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> All right, enough for today. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>